Good afternoon, everyone. We are coming to you live today from uh, the 2025 MERSA uh, Group Nationals in uh, beautiful St. Louis at the Ventress Rifle Club of St. Louis. I'm joined by my two buddies, uh, Harley Baker, Hall of Fame member, and uh, four-time Super Shoot uh, winner and all-around great guy and Hall of Fame manner, great friend, uh, Jeff Summers. Um, guys, today what we want to talk about is bullet seed. Uh, I know it sounds rudimentary and very basic for a lot of people. You just seed the bullet, right? You just, you know, put a bullet in the bullet seeder and shoot the bullet. Shoot the bullet and whatever powder charge you put in there, whatever number, right? <laughs> um, unfortunately, it's there's a little bit more than that. Uh, the big thing that a lot of people just don't realize is that when you are setting up your bullet seeder and you record your overall dimensions uh, for that respective round that you have, I think I have to have with me. Uh -huh. um, you want to use some type of bullet comparator. There's so many different places that have it. Uh, you know, Brownells offers one. Uh, certainly Hornady is very popular or your gunsmith may have a respective bullet comparator gauge that you can easily affix to any type of uh, calipers and with this you're going to be measuring from your ogive of your respective bullet down to the case head and basically after you've identified maybe the seating depth that you want to maybe test different loads you're going to set up your corresponding bullet seeder to achieve that number. Uh, you may have to raise or lower the stem for your respective bullet seeder in order to achieve that given overall length. Where the challenge begins that a lot of people aren't cognizant of is that if I'm going from say 29.2 to 29.7 or 30.2, believe it or not, as you guys know, that requires your bullet seeder to adjust because what's happening, anytime you're starting to seat this bullet on a column of powder, yes. if there's no powder in the case, you're going to get a shorter or the shortest possible overall seating down. However, as that bullet starts to touch the column of powder column inside the neck, now that same seating depth or setting on your bullet seeder that might have been say 2695 now with a little bit of powder in that neck that same setting on your bullet seeder is now 2697 Seven or eight. right and if 2695 was working where your gun was shooting well you're going to find that maybe now that a little bit hotter load not only may work or it may not work but you've also changed your overall length right. so, so you're two things uh, right you're changing two exactly so what a lot of people fail to realize is that if you are increasing your powder charge you need to take time to figure out what effect that had on your overall length because it will not be the same right Correct. and as you continue to add powder to it you're also going to see that that same setting on that bullet seeder, instead of being at 2695 or 97, now it may be 269899. So there could be a variety of range. And what happens is that you will need to reset your bullet seeder to a lower number. And with that lower number, you're basically compressing that powder in order to achieve that original 2695. And today, with the proliferation of cut rifle barrels that we're using, your seating depth is really important to where if you're going to be off a thousandths or two thousandths, now you're going to see it on the target. And you'll feel it too. Yes. So what we see a lot of times with the newer shooters is that when they are trickling their powder into their respective case before they put a bullet into it, Sometimes they're not paying attention to the cadence or the speed they're dropping the powder. So some case next, maybe the powder might be towards the bottom. Some that you drop the powder a little bit faster are going to be up higher in the neck. That variance in that powder column inside that neck, should there be variance, 
that will result in a variance in your overall seating depth. And as we've all been there, you may find that when your seating depth is right, you're going to have a certain feel when that bolt closes on your loaded round. But have you not been paying close attention and dropped powder a little bit quicker, now that bullet might be sticking out two thousandths, maybe three thousandths longer, right? And with that, you're going to feel that little bit more of a crush in closing that bolt. And with that, when you're seeing or feeling that difference in how that bolt's closing on your loaded round, you are changing that respective load and you're not going to have a positive result on the target because some of your rounds might have been loaded at 2695, some could be at 2697 or 2698. Those mix of those seating depths, you know, will result into, you know, poor shooting a falling rifle. So it's important to, as a recap, you know, drop the powder slowly and consistently. If you do want to go up in powder, bear in mind that you will probably need to adjust your bullet seeder down maybe a, a thousandths or two thousandths from that original setting. So anytime you adjust powder, you have to be cognizant that it will require an adjustment most of the time uh, in your bullet seeder, especially as you're going up in powder. So uh, again, we wanted to just take time to go over that because we do see a lot of people that go up and down in powder and they're noticing that maybe the gun, the bolt's closing a little bit harder and the gun's just not shooting. And if you're spot checking, which is really important to do, especially in larger matches, but every match, you want to take the time to just go through with your bullet comparator and you want 2695, making sure that all your ammunition is that seating depth. Should you find something that might be off like a thousandths or two thousandths, you may choose to, um, again, reset that bullet, reseat that bullet, and hopes that you can get it back to say that 2695. If you're having a lot of problem to where your overall length is fluctuating, you're more than that one thousandths. The other thing that people need to look at is their neck tension especially with the hotter loads. If you've got a medium or light neck tension, that powder column inside that neck, I think you guys would agree, is gonna push the bullet up. And have that ammunition be sitting for a while, you will find, if you come back, and say maybe an hour later, your seating depths will vary because your neck tension wasn't adequate for that amount of powder that you have in that case. And that's really important that you wanted to want to make sure that you have adequate uh, neck tension to hold that bullet, especially with the hotter loads that you're going to put more power in that case neck. Do you guys have any experience or anything that you want to add, Harley? I'll One turn. big thing uh, that I find, no matter whose cedar you have, uh, a custom made Sinclair, whoever makes your cedar, one thing they have in common is this ojive uh, pin. And I see these things at times, and I try to take care of it, but uh, Q-tip, you've got to keep the maintenance on this, so when that mate's in there, I don't have a piece of steel wool that you clean the case neck with, or I don't have uh, just something in there, it's gonna drive your seating depth, but make sure that that's nice and clean, and maintenance, maintenance, maintenance on, on this thing. It's got to slip in, Make sure it's not leaving any scratches or uh, anything like that. As I said, every manufacturer has this stem in a different form, but it's got to go onto this bullet at, a, at the proper a proper range. Because if you're going in and out and going up and up in power, you should, as soon as you change that power charge, check the length of that uh, overall length. Mm -hmm. Jeff, anything that you want to share from your experiences? No, I think you guys about covered it all. Yeah. And again, uh, to Harley, great point. Taking some Q-tips, a little lighter fluid, right. making sure the inside of your die on every given match day, you want to go in there. And it's so easy to get a flake of powder that got crushed that stayed yes. on the outside of the neck. That will cause fluctuations and variances in your seating depth. And seating depth is so very critical, whether it's a button rifle barrel or cut rifle, but we're certainly uh, in the game that we play, where it's precision, 
we want to make sure those seating depths are always the same. And so many people don't understand that as you are adding or you're reducing your load, that seating depth that you have that uh, seater set for will be corresponding to that given amount of powder. Any change in that powder, you're going to see a change in that seating depth. So again, we just uh, wanted to share this information yes. with you guys. and. Right. Uh, we appreciate everybody subscribing. We appreciate all the great comments, um, all the likes that we've had. And please share it with your friends, and we'll continue to keep the content coming. We've got lots more great videos and stuff. Right, going. and please send us some questions. Right. We love yeah. questions. Yep, and, and these guys really flow with information after I've given them a couple of Crown Royals, too. I, I just want to share that stuff with our audience and stuff. and. Uh, uh, no, it's been really good. I mean, I think we're up to 126 countries right now that our video, All Things Bench Rest with wow. Friends, has reached. And I think we've reached maybe 100 and some people on PBS. So uh, thank you to the PBS watchers and stuff. So, But in all sincerity, we do appreciate the comments, uh, the likes, and the support. And watch us for uh, more uh, content coming out real soon. Thanks. All right, goodbye. Thank you all. Good shooting.